take one. Hey guys, welcome to Let's Talk Tech. My name is Alan Billings, and we're doing the show, I'm doing the show, by myself, in a hotel room in Maine, because I'm on vacation for two weeks, so figured, why not do a show anyway, give you guys a list of the show. Um, so, first topic we're going to start out with is two-step verification, two steps. Now, two-step verification is basically just two-step verification to log into your account. It makes it safer and more secure. How this works is simple. You log into your account, put in your username and password like you used to. Next, it sends you a verification number, randomized. Not always the same, because that, be, that would just be another password. A randomized verification code sends it via text message to your cell phone. Very cool. Uh, it prevents from hackers and just anyone else that's trying to get into your account. Um, usually it will also ask you for a password. Facebook does this. It will uh, uh, ask you for your verification on uh, a computer if it doesn't recognize the device. If it does recognize the device, it probably will not ask you for that code again. But I know Google does this. I know Facebook does it. I like that uh, the Facebook does it because it asks you um, for your, uh, your computer security, your computer's it recognizes the computer's location and everything. It says, hey, okay, I recognize this computer. You don't have to use a verification code. With Google, you always have to use a verification code, which, you know, can be a pain. But it's very secure, and it helps you out a lot when someone's trying to get into your account. Now, you can always change your password at any time. And what you, uh, what I should actually talk about about this is that Google actually did this uh, about a year, year or so ago, two years ago, and they ended it because it didn't work with all their systems. Uh, Google and Facebook ha both have external systems. So, like logging in via Foursquare. If you log in via Foursquare via Google, or log in via Pear Tree via Google, um, it's going to be like, hey, you need a password, and that's fine. So, uh, you can use your username and password sign in, but then it wouldn't like it because it wasn't using the code. It needed a verification code. It wasn't set up for the external use of. It wasn't uh, set up for use of external websites to log in to using your Google account. Now Google has made it so you can do that. You can actually log in using your Google account, using your username and password, and then it will send you a verification code to your cell phone, what you enter in, and then you log into your account. There's other ways around this. If you do not have your cell phone with you, that's fine too. Google sends you multiple verification codes that you could possibly use. Take these down on notes and carry them around with you in your wallet or purse. Because if you do not have your cell phone on you, then these can come in very handy. If uh, Another way of doing it would be access, uh, saying, oh, I don't use this email address anymore. Okay, that's a second option. The, and then the third option is your cell phone. So, yes, there's other ways around the security codes if you do not have your cell phone on you. But, yes, it is more secure, it is more secure than just having a username and password. Because most people don't randomize your username and password every other week. Which is, rec it's recommended that you change password every month or so. Every couple months, that you I recommend that you change at least every six to, six months to, tw six to twelve months change your password for all your accounts especially don't have the same password for all your accounts that actually helps out a lot too uh, try and change them up uh, even different codes you should always have at least three letters three numbers and you can add an exclamation point or some sort of quotation mark to uh, just make it a little bit harder if it's allowed so that's great, that's a great way, but two-step verification is really pushing it for Facebook and Google right now, and there's not too many people that have uh, two-step verification, but it will come out soon for more people because it's so secure and it helps out so much. We're going to be going to a quick break and we'll be back in a sec. McLaren USA is voluntarily recalling about 1 million strollers because of fingertip lacerations and amputations. This recall involves all McLaren single and double umbrella strollers. The stroller's hinge mechanism poses a fingertip amputation and laceration hazard to the child when the consumer is unfolding or opening the stroller. The firm has received 15 reports of children placing their finger in the stroller's hinge mechanism resulting in 12 reports of fingertip amputations in the United States. 
The word McLaren is printed on the stroller. The affected models in this recall are Volo, Triumph, Quest Sport, Quest Mod, Techno XT, Techno XLR, Twin Triumph, Twin Techno, and Easy Traveler. They were sold at Babies R Us, Target, and other juvenile product and mass merchandise retailers nationwide from 1999 through November 2009. Consumers should immediately stop using these recalled strollers and contact McLaren USA to receive a free repair kit. For additional information, contact McLaren USA toll-free at 877-688-2326 or visit the firm's website at mclaren.us. CPSC is still interested in receiving incident or injury reports that are either directly related to this product recall or involved in a different hazard with the same product. Please tell us about it at cpsc.gov. Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Talk Tech. Now we're talking about Google Wallet as our second second topic would be Google Wallet. What is Google Wallet and why is it important? It's going to change things. Google Wallet is basically Google and it wants to add everything that's in your wallet slash purse into your phone. So basically your phone has um, uh, easiest way to explain this is your phone, they want to add your credit card information, everything to your phone, which most people already have their credit card information saved on their phone because for uh, buying stuff on Amazon and all that, but that means Amazon has your code. Basically, what you're doing is you're sending all your credit card information to Google, which you probably have already had if you've used Google Checkout. So, this isn't. This might be an issue because, if for especially for people who don't like giving out their credit card number to unsafe. I wouldn't say unsafe, but to un to people you don't know, to companies you don't know. Now, um, a lot of people are against Google because Google's that uh, people are like, hey, Google's gonna take over the world because Google knows too much. Now, so uh, back to the whole thing is that if. Not, they don't just want to add your credit card numbers in there as well. Go, uh, they want to add credit card numbers, notes, which you can already take in your phone. Notes, anything that you keep in wallets, gift cards, anything. They want to add that to the Google wallet on your phone. And all you have to do is take your phone, swipe it. Swipe it through this thing, and um, there you go. Uh, it's basically as easy as a, uh, the PayPass. PayPass was released a while ago, and just a simple... Bing. Um, this information is transferred using Bluetooth technology. Yeah, it's transferring it from your phone to the pin pad. Um, so, but a lot of people are concerned about security. Like I said, the security, the most, uh, the latest Nexus. You can only get this for the Nexus phone, uh, made by Google. You can only get this for the Nexus phone at the moment, and it, it the, in the Nexus phone has the latest G4 chip, which is one of the most secure chips for your cell phone. Now, not only is the chip very secure, but it, uh, it is, the chip is only the information is the chip's only unlocked whenever you're making a transaction. Now, think about how long it takes you to make a transaction. It takes you max at 10 seconds. If you're using, if you don't, if you use your credit card and you sign, max 10 seconds, 10 to 15 seconds, no more than that. So that someone would have to hack into that G4 chip, which is again the most secure chip out there at the moment, and someone would have to hack into that G4 chip in within a 15 second period of it being tra of the information being transferred from your phone to the pin pad. So basically, they actually have to be hacking the pin pad, basically it would be difficult uh, within a, especially within a ten, 5 to 10 to 15 second period so it's unlikely that this would possibly happen because again the information is locked it's in that security chip and the security chip is locked as long as a transaction is not being made now uh, a third step of verification that is within uh, the Google Wallet is that you have to make another uh, number you can't just use uh, you're, when you use your Google Wallet, you're going to swipe it, and you're going to have a separate number uh, that you're going to use for all your credit cards. You don't have to remember your credit card number or your credit card uh, PIN number or whatever, your debit card number or whatever. That. You don't have to remember that number. You have to remember the number that's in the Google Wallet. So basically, it's going to give you one master password for the Google Wallet. So whenever you swipe it, you just remember that one code. 
one code and it will uh, be able to transfer easily within a 5-10 second period. Now this, like I said, this is only available for the Nexus, uh, Nexus 3GS I believe and it's only available for MasterCard users. People with a MasterCard. Can I say that there's not as many people have MasterCard, some people have Visa. So they're really working on trying to uh, multitask this and get this to work with multi more people, more banks and everything. Uh, it also works only with Citibank. So if you have Citibank, you actually also have MasterCard. Or if you have MasterCard, then you can also get this to work as well. But those are the only that's the only card that can go into the Google Wallet at the moment is the MasterCard. Uh, there's actually a second card for people that are really on edge about security or don't have a MasterCard, and that is called the Google Prepaid Money Card, which basically you go in and you go to Google Checkout and you add money to your Google Card. This is the most secure way of doing this, is by adding 50 to to $100 or 25 or 5 or 10 or 10 cents to your Google Prepaid Money Card. And you can just use that as your uh, Google Wallet money. So this way you don't have to add everything else if you're uh, at ease about the security of this. You just add the $10, $15. Who cares? $10, $15. Yeah, so what? They'll track down to get lost, whatever. But that is one of the... It's it's huge. It's very uh, the G4 chip is very secure, and the whole system in itself is very secure. But a lot of people don't know that uh, how secure this really is, and how many security measures that Google has put into this to make it... Uh, be a completely secure feature. Now they're again they're waiting for other banks to get involved on this other other cards and everything. So this way it will work with everyone. Now again it also only works with certain pin pads. It doesn't work with every pin pad. It's going to work with just about any pin pad that's a pay pass. That I would believe. I would believe if it, uh, you had a pay pass, if they had a pay pass um, transaction pad pin pad, I would think it would work. But it doesn't only work in certain cities like New York, so it's not that popular yet. It's only popular to people like in Silicon Valley or New York, so uh, ma major cities, major cities. So it's not going to work for everyone at the moment. Hopefully, in the next five to ten years, we're going to see a huge change, and this can actually take off. Not unless Google does what it usually does and says, "Hey, no one uses this. No one's used it for like a year." Yeah, we're going to drop it, but I think this is going to be a huge advancement. Uh, they, we've seen phones, uh, at least I have seen phones, that can buy soda from soda machines using your phone. But this is more, this you can buy anything if you have the proper pin pad. And this is going to be a great product once it's released. Now, if you're just using the Google Wall, if you're like, if you're someone like me who only likes to use their, their card for everything, doesn't like to use cash, they have cash, they give it away, that's what I do. And I'm just like, oh yeah, here's a dollar, I don't like dollars. Um, you just, you, you don't, you don't use this. You carry cash around with you or carry an actual card around with you and just try the product out because again it's not it's not stable in security purposes but it's not stable so you can use everywhere. It's only stable in places like New York. So keep that in mind. Uh, you're probably going to want to carry a secondary thing, a uh, secondary form of uh, transaction with you. Uh, money. Uh, so this way uh, it can work everywhere. And again, there's also a lot of places that don't take credit cards or debit cards, whichever you want to use. A lot of people that don't take cards yet. There's a lot of people, and it actually does make me mad, but yes, there are some people who still don't take cards. So sometimes it is good to carry around some cash with you at all times. Uh, so again, good wall, it's going to, I really feel like it's going to take off. When this was first released, it was huge news. Um, and everyone thought it was a great idea but of course you know it's at the convention everyone's like hey it's, oh my god it's a great idea um but yeah no let me also go on and talk about how google uh actually google was sued for actually once this was released the two people uh that uh, made this possible that really worked on this really hard the, the uh people that were really in charge of this program uh actually were uh former paypal employees uh, they formerly worked at PayPal, and PayPal was actually going to work with Google to make this happen. Eventually, PayPal gave out and said, "No, no, 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 we're not comfortable with this." And now they, and now the the two people left PayPal and they went to Google and said, "Well, we want to go with Google." So now Google, uh, now they start working with Google and they set this whole thing up. And now PayPal is suing Google for this huge lump sum of money because they're saying that was our idea. 
we were going to do that, but they backed out. So I don't think that's going to go anywhere anytime soon. Um, but yeah, what do you think about this? Uh, let me know. Uh, let's talk tech one at gmail.com. If you think Google's uh, going to get sued, I mean, like, they're going to get sued, but if you think Google's going to win, PayPal's going to win, let's talk tech one at gmail.com. Let me know what you think. We'll be back. Uh, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with our third segment. <laughs> 